Shalom, welcome to The Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Delmar, together with my co-host Mark Rohn at Just Stay by News Service and jbiztechvalley.com. Well, Rabbi, I've got to tell you, we have another assemblyman who has not been who, with a guest, as our guest today, who has not been on the show yet, mm -hmm. Steve Simbruitz, mm -hmm. who's welcome near, the near the, my hometown where I grew up in Brooklyn, mm -hmm. uh, and you're in Brighton Beach. Areas? Yes, well, first, it's a pleasure to be here, okay. and thank right. you for inviting me. Uh, yes, I take in Brighton Beach, Manhattan Beach, Sheepshead Bay, right. uh, Midwood. Uh, you have a lot of Russian I always say when Brighton Beach, they always say the Russian Jews, when they came over in 1990, when the, you know, the uh, Russian government let them out, that the mm -hmm. Brighton Beach is like a, the Russian uh, center of activity. Well, it is. And I, I was working uh, in Brighton Beach from the early 1970s really? and worked at the Shorefront Y oh, in the you. 1980s as the program director. And it was my job to welcome our new immigrants and provide program, program, programming for them, which was pretty amazing, working with them uh, and UJA Federation to make sure that they had housing and, and everything that they needed to, to start a new life. Yeah, that was a big job because there were thousands probably. But that's how we got to know them it all. Was, it was wonderful. It was, yeah. uh, they, they saved the community. Yeah. It was just a, a, a new beginning for a Brighton Beach that was getting old. Memoirs, huh? Brighton Beach memoirs. <laughs> it was a wonderful, uh, wonderful time then. I wanted then. to tell you a story that I was just recalling to someone else um, about Mario Cuomo when he went to Brighton Beach to um, uh, speak to a senior group when he was running for mayor of New York City, goes back a ways. Mm -hmm. And he said, uh, he talked about the death penalty and they were all in favor of it mm -hmm. and he was against the death penalty mm -hmm. and they just about drummed him out of the room. Yes. And uh, he went walking with his aide, Fabian Palomino, along Sheepshead Bay and Emmons Avenue and uh, really dejected, saying he's never gonna win, it's never gonna happen. And all of a sudden, this little old lady comes up to him and goes, Mario, Mario, oh, I love you, Mario. Oh, I've been following you and, uh, you know, in your career and everything, and you're just terrific, and I'm voting for you, and I think you're wonderful. And he was so happy. It was lifted him up so much that he wanted to pick her up and kiss her. And then she says, Mario Biaggi, I love you. Uh, very good. And then he says he wanted to throw her into the bay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. yeah but it was an interesting community. You had the old socialists yeah. who were there from the 1920s on. And, and those were, you know, the, the, who became the seniors who um, did not welcome the new Russian immigrants with, wel with welcoming arms. Really, it's interesting. Yeah, it was and yeah, interesting to help time. integrate them. So into that, the was, that was part of my job of, of getting them to, work, to be together. Now, a lot of your background, Steve, is in housing. I mean, you were the director of housing and community development for Metropolitan New York Coordinating Council on Jewish Poverty. Mm -hmm. It's a mouthful. Yeah. And like well, you it's said, easier to say Met Council. Yes. Right, Met Council. Right. Is that Willie Rapfogel's yes. uh, group? Yes. Okay, yes. so you knew Willie, you knew... Yeah, I came and I was uh, working there when uh, David Cohn, Rabbi David Cohn, was the executive director. So. And I left uh, pretty soon after Willie came on board uh -huh. to work for uh, Mayor Giuliani. Well, it's, I'm just saying, you know, with the trouble that Willie Rapfogel got into, you know, I was going to ask you if you knew him well enough, but maybe not. I didn't, you know, if you were just crossing. Yeah, know, but you know, we so. all do Willie. And, yeah. and uh, you know, he's, uh, he's, you know, someone who um, I worked with very closely, whether I was at Met Council or when I was in the city. I was spent mm -hmm. many yeah. time, a many, uh, good amount of time at HPD. I know you were in housing, and maybe that's many years ago, but housing's such a big issue. I know just from the grassroots, maybe it doesn't make headlines, but just it's so expensive to live. And you know, I mean, it was a joke because, you know, I'm up here and I take people to the Rebbe 770 Eastern Parkway. You're talking, even though I say I'm 29 years old, but my white beard doesn't attune to that. In any case, Dad, I'd say, come to the Rebbe. Rabbi Brooklyn, I'm so scared. What are yeah. you doing to me? And now I laugh because, you know, you can't, it's lucky a million dollar house. You That's can't cheap. Even, That's uh, cheap. Yeah. That, that, you know, brownstones in, in the Crown Heights, bed -Stuy areas have gone up close to $2 million. It's, yeah. an, it's an amazing thing that's occurred. And a lot has to do with uh, the previous mayor. 
I give all, a, a lot of credit to the past borough president. Marty Markowitz was just absolutely great for, uh, for the borough. And I believe that uh, our, our mayor now uh, understands the importance of housing. Well, he's and, from and Brooklyn made, also. Yes, so and, he he's knows made, and he's made housing a big issue. Now, were you on the housing Assembly Housing Committee? Yes, and, I was. But you're not now? No, that's correct. Why did you step off? Well, when I was named by uh, Speaker Silver four years ago uh, as the chair of the Alcoholism and Substance Abuse Committee, it was at the same time the committee met at the same time that the Housing Committee met. So, so you had a choice of one or the other. Well, either being the chairman or not. Yes. Right, so the chairman gets an extra yes. stipend, which, yeah. hey, that's, you know. Yeah. And plus, well, let's talk about the chair of Alcoholism and Drug Abuse Committee. Uh, one of your big passions to combat is the prescription painkiller epidemic. Mm -hmm. yes. So tell us what well, you're doing to combat what that. We have, what we are living through right now is the fact that we have thousands of young people dying from prescription drugs. And I am talking about, you have young kids in every single community, the Orthodox Jewish community, the Sephardic community, the Russian community, the Muslim community. What happens is the kids are finding prescription pills in their parents' medicine cabinets because you and I had a tooth pulled and our dentist gave us 90 pills of per, you know, Percocet or something. Or hydrocodone or something. Whatever right. it is, it was in the medicine cabinet and kids start taking it and they like it. <laughs> they like it, so they keep taking it and then they go out and buy it on the street and it's become so expensive that uh, then to pay $25 for a small pill, kids can't afford anymore, no matter how rich their parents are. So it's much easier for now to use heroin. Mm. So you have, believe it or not, on a weekly basis, Jewish kids, well, Russian kids, um, kids, Sephardic kids who are dying from an overdose of either prescription drugs or heroin. And what I was doing was going around to synagogues, to yeshivas, and talking to people to make sure that they understood that they're, that danger is out there. Now, do they want to talk about it? Is this something that's a taboo subject where they'd well, rather no. not? Well, the, no. The, what happened was the, the, the yeshiva uh, principals didn't believe that these things were happening until they started seeing it themselves. We would talk to parents. We would have town hall meetings, let them know that these things were happening. And then all of a sudden, they would hear about funerals that were happening in, in the community, that these things were really real yeah. and, and, and that it was happening right in our community. Because so I am working with Jewish organizations mm -hmm. to, to get the word out. Uh, the same thing in the Russian-speaking community, we do radio shows um, in Russian. I don't, but you know, people on there are, are, are actually speaking about it, letting parents and grandparents know this is what you should be looking at. Is this out where for. you bring Alec Brokrasny in for is it, as no, your no, aide to well, interpret? No, 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 no well, we duo. Do, uh, <laughs> well, Alec is very helpful. So, but but we do. It's it's a very serious issue, and we want to talk to people where they are, and that's why we have organizations that come up who have Russian-speaking people, and and we do this in the in the. Sephardic community, the Orthodox community, we talk about it as much as possible. The reason I ask you, are they receptive, is because when the AIDS epidemic was at its height, the, 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 Jewish or the observant Jewish community did not believe that AIDS was in their mm. community, and they didn't mm. want uh, counselors or anyone to talk to the kids about this, they wanted, or, or the, even the parents. Mm. And uh, now they realize that mm. it was their biggest issue in the, uh, in the major areas around Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. So the, I guess it's stemmed the tide a little bit, but I remember Jerry Nadler, the congressman who represents like Manhattan all the way into Brooklyn. And At Crown that time, yes, yeah. yes. I mean, he was he saying that. He went into Brighton Beach, Coney Island, Brighton yeah. Beach. But Huge that, district, this is but different. This is very different. This is something that is, that is happening more and more. People are hearing about it on a daily basis. Right. Uh, the, the funerals that I've gone to in the Orthodox community has been So they're receptive enormous. to your message of, you know, no, say no to drugs. I mean, they're... 
Well, it's more than just saying no. You're trying not only to get the kids to say no, but you want the parents to know to go through their medicine cabinet and, and get rid of those pills and to understand that, that there's a larger problem that we have to look at. What about the casino issue and problem gambling? I mean, that's something you've been mm -hmm. focused on as well in your role as chair. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that was something that uh, in the Orthodox community as well, um, there, there was talk of having it in Coney Island, and that was something that the community was against. And I represent my district, I think, very well, and, and fought that, which was different than dealing with the gambling issues. In, in the committee, we talk about the fact, when I was named chair of the committee, I called up a friend of mine who runs an organization called SAFE. His name is Ike Dweck, and it's a Sephardic organization. And I said, I've just been named chair of the committee. I need your help. I said, Tell me about it. He says, come to my office tonight at 8 o'clock. Came to his office, brought me into a room, and there was a group of 30 people, men, women, people with payas, um, uh, black, green, yellow people. It was amazing. And he just brought me into a, a Gambler's Anonymous meeting. All these people had gambling issues. Certain people there had lost their homes to gambling, lost, the, lost their life savings. And in the next room were spouses, girlfriends, uh, boyfriends, on how to deal with, with a spouse who had a, uh, or, or someone who had a gambling mm -hmm. issue. So it's a very big issue. So these are all issues, these are all issues that affect every single community in New York State. So how did you vote when the uh, constitutional amendment came up for these casinos uh, flourishing around well, the I state? Well, I'm in favor of casinos. I have okay. absolutely no problem with building casinos, but at the same time, we have to make sure that there's enough money, and that's why for every casino, for every machine that's built uh, in, in the casinos that have been chosen, whether it's a table or a machine, $500 is, is put aside so that money goes towards prevention and treatment programs. And who puts gambling. that money, that $500? The owner of the, uh, the casino. Of the casinos. Owner? Yes. They... And we have programs in the casinos. <clears throat> and, and we teach, and there's an organization that goes around and teaches the dealers and the people who work there how to look out for uh, problem gamblers and what to do. Right. It's interesting. Well, Mark's bringing up an important point. We're on the Jewish view and, you know, Orthodox Judaism. Many times, you know, again, I'm, you know, a rabbi, so I am a counselor to people and I know the issues. And sometimes it is frustrating, and I'm glad you're dealing with it, like, oh, alcoholism. Oh, Jews, Jews aren't alcoholics mm -hmm. or drug abusers. No, that's, that's not us. That's not our community or yeah. gambling. Well, look, kiddish and, clubs. Let's, let's, for example, <laughs> kiddish clubs are a very big issue. Where, where kids will go around from Kiddush to Kiddush on Shabbos and, and just keep drinking shots. And then before Mincha, you're going to find a lot of kids just sleeping in the basement because they drank so much. And there, a lot of shuls have responded by cutting out alcohol completely. Well, I know in Lawrence, Long Island, they actually cater Kiddush Club. I yeah. mean, it's like they get overboard mm -hmm. in Lawrence, Long yeah. Island, but they have, but, uh, you know, in Brooklyn, obviously, you know, they, it's, a, and up here in Albany, too, mm -hmm. they have, uh, alcohol is a big part of Kiddush Club. Yes. You know, and but, well, we make sure. The thing <laughs> is, if you're going to have a Kiddush Club, if, you know, just be aware that yes. there are kids who are going from, from shul to shul just to drink. Okay, and now the other committees that I think that you're on, if I have it right, is codes, environmental conservation, health, and insurance. Mm -hmm. And now yeah. they said steering committee, is there a steering? Well, there was a steering committee, and, and I think that's being revamped by, okay. by Speaker Hasty. And uh, how do you like the speaker? Is he gonna be good for the Jewish community? I think he's gonna be terrific for New York State. And the Jewish I community? I came in, and the Jewish community. Yes, he's been very receptive from day one. You knew you knew you were. I came in with him. I came. You were in the we, same class. We came in together in two thousand. Yes. yes. Okay. And that brings me to my next segue: is that you said you succeeded your wife, mm -hmm. who served twenty months or so mm -hmm. in the legislature, less than a term, mm -hmm. uh, and she had passed away from cancer. Can you tell us how you know what happened and how long she when she was diagnosed and that sort of thing? Well, when she was elected in ninety eight. Um, 
the day after her election, she was diagnosed with colon cancer and had surgery you know, immediately thereafter and was told uh, that she had stage four and that she would have less than two years to live. Oh. And it was her decision that she was going to be the best assembly member she could be and worked very, very hard to make sure she could do that. How long were you married to her? You have two children with her. Well, no, she had two children. She had from, two children yes, from, marriage, from a previous oh. marriage, yes. Okay. But um, uh, it was at the time that I was the director of intergovernmental right. for the New York City Housing Authority, so my job was up in Albany. So it was just beshared that uh, I would have to come up to Albany and I would have, you know, that I would be able to drive her up and down. And uh, that was uh, it, that it worked out very well. Being that caretaker role. You yeah, know, it, you know. it, it worked out very well. And she was very, uh, very a as active as she possibly could. Mm -hmm. I mean, she would, you know, she attended session and, and committees and was very involved. And she How needed an afternoon nap. and. Uh, you know, so uh, I would, you know, take her to the hotel and then she would how, take a quick nap and then get ready for whatever she had to do in the evening. How long were you married to her for? Well, we were married for about uh, eight years. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't, it was always, it's always too short. Yeah. I mean, you know. uh, and she was of Egyptian descent. Yeah, she was, as, as we talked about. And she's, she's the first Sephardic Jew elected to the state legislature. That is correct. Wow. Uh, she, uh, her uh, family is from Egypt. And uh, from Egypt, they moved to uh, Paris, in, uh, to France, when Nasser took over and uh, took over all the, uh, uh, all the businesses and kicked all the Jews out of Egypt. And then... Uh, Wow, that was Bashert. She got to meet you and mm -hmm. you married, and yeah. you know, that was terrific. And now you're on your second marriage. How is it that you, how's the dating and being an assemblyman and being able to date, and <laughs> how does that juggling act go? <laughs> you do what you have to do. You do what you have to do. Yeah. Okay, and, yeah. and you're married to Vilma Huertas? Yes. Yes, I'm very lucky. She's a terrific, a terrific person. With yes. the New York City Housing Authority, yes. and she's the secretary to the board. Yes, correct. So she's got a high-level position. Yes. My, a friend of my family's uh, was Norman Parnes. Oh, I know Norman. Yeah, and, of course. And uh, he got me my first summer job working for NYCHA. Really? Before they had computers. Mm. And they, my summer project was to alphabetize these um, huge number of Section 8 housing cards mm -hmm. that they had on my desk that no one wanted to alphabetize. Yeah, well, thank goodness they use a computer now. Well, they would just, yeah. so I alphabetized the cards in like three or four days. Mm -hmm. And this was supposed to be the whole summer. Right. So they had nothing else for me to do. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you something, when I was there, I wasn't, you know, I was like paying union dues, but you got to work 14 weeks before you're uh, can be in the union. Mm -hmm. My job was 13 weeks. I never got those dues back. Or talk to the, the chair of the government employees, uh, okay. Mr. Abadi. Uh -huh. you, know, you know, you're talking about his wife, but you have your interesting story you also, or maybe your bio from your parents. Tell us a little bit about, you know, your background. Well, uh, my parents are Holocaust survivors. Uh, my father passed away a year ago. Oh. He was uh, 89 years old. But uh, my mom and dad were from Demblin, Poland. And in 1939, they were, the Nazis took them into the ghetto, the Demblin ghetto. And then they were taken to uh, the Chancellor slave labor camp. And they were together during that whole time. And in 1945, when they were liberated, they got married. So I grew good, up, yeah. So I grew up as a son. Five yes. Years yeah. In the uh, it was six. I mean, it was a total of six years yeah, from thirty-nine to forty-five, and I grew up uh, always asking my mother, and I knew it. I had to ask my mother uh, to tell me a story. I always wanted to hear a story. A mm -hmm. Growing up, I wanted to know what it was like for for them. So uh, my mother would tell me a different story. Every single night, my father told me one story. I'll never forget that, when he saw his sister killed by the Nazis. And it was just so horrible for him and so upsetting that uh, he, he just uh, broke down and could never tell me another story. How was she killed in what way? Uh, she was, uh, she was on the back. No, 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 she was, no, it was more violent than that. She was, uh, they, they were working in the field and 
and she, at the end of the day, they would uh, pick up uh, uh, the so-called prisoners, the, the people working in the fields, uh, to take them back to the barracks, and they picked up my aunt, and she was alone in the, in like an open pickup truck. And what the, do, the driver was doing was going back and forth. He would go forward very quickly to see if he can get her to, to, to jerk, and he would go forward and back, forward and back, and he would do this for a while to the point where my aunt fell off the truck uh, and the driver, the Nazi, continued to go forward and backward, but this time over her body. <gasps> and mm. this was something that my father was watching and could do nothing about. So once he relayed that story, that was it. But uh, story it, it was a terrible you? story, but uh, it's something that left uh, something on me to the point where now I, I, I know I'm, and I grew up as a Grina, as we say. Uh, I am In a, America. Yeah. Uh, I am a, uh, a child of Holocaust survivors, and uh, my mother would tell me stories and say to me, you have to promise me one thing, that you would tell your children. Can you tell us, can you relay and, a story to us from well, that, that, that your that mother kind, told you? Know, it, it, it's that kind of story of, yeah. of, of you know, my, or for example, her father, um, you know, uh, somebody by the name of Shmuel um, killed a Nazi. Really? Uh, in the camp. And uh, they took out all the Shmuels that they could find, my father was taken out. It was uh, somehow my grandfather, my mother's father, hid my father in his barrack so that he wouldn't be taken. And all the shmuels that were there were all killed. I mean, it was those, those kinds of stories that leave an impact. And once I became the assemblyman, I had not only an opportunity to t tell my children, but to tell the children of my district. So that's why I have a annual event, an annual Holocaust uh, event, where we get all the private schools as well as public schools to get involved in the projects, to do uh, essays and media events and projects on it. And I do one big event. Mm -hmm. uh, is it around year. Holocaust Remembrance Day? Yes. Is it somewhere yes. around that time? Yes. And it's, it's, it's really very important. And I go around, and um, th there's an organization called World Without Nazism that I, I, I go with, and I've, I've spoken in uh, Moscow, and I've spoken in Latvia on the day that Latvians dress up in their Nazi uniforms that they still carry, you know, that they still have, mm. and talk about my father, and I talk about my mother, and the greatest thrill my father ever had was when, he, when I told him I was going to Berlin to talk about him. It's, it's just mm. something that meant a lot. And your, your mom, is she still with yes, us? Yes, my mom, God bless her. Yeah, she's going to be 89 in two weeks. All right, well, wish her a happy birthday. And, and I certainly will. Do you see the number No, on her? she was in a slave labor camp. She was not, uh, she was not in one of the major uh, uh -huh. camps like Auschwitz. Did your father but have No, a no, they were in no. the same slave labor camps. Uh -huh. But I am going to cross a major issue off my bucket list uh, this summer, and I will be going to Demblin. Mm -hmm. uh, wow. to my parents' hometown, going to uh, Krakow and Auschwitz, and to, as well as to Warsaw, to see the new Jewish museum there. Mm -hmm. But I always wanted to go back with my parents. Uh, my father said yes. Are you taking He wanted mother? to go. My mother said no. Oh, she, okay. she never wanted to go. And then the time that my mother finally agreed, that's when my father got sick, and we couldn't go. But I'm still going to do it. Well, bring a, don't just take pictures, take moving pictures. Yes, I do that. You know? I, I, and, I, I'm, I'm the videographer. OK, well, that, that's good to know. And yeah, what about this? Um, yeah, so, so you really say that there's a need for increased vigilance to deal with this continuing threat of Nazism. You still say that it, it's a continuing it threat. Well, what we've seen in Paris, what we've seen in Europe, throughout Europe. Yes. And that's why um, we're concerned about uh, the issue of uh, 
of anti-Semitism, not only in Paris or Greece or wherever, but right here mm -hmm. in, in the United yeah, States. You know, like that, I was, you know, my parents came from Europe, but in any case that they didn't go to their Holocaust, but I was young, you know, we were just thinking, well, we're in America now and we would never see such a thing. And, you know, time goes by and the anti-Semitism is on the rise right now. Mm -hmm. I wanted to let the audience know that you have a master, an MSW master's in social work. Yes. And from Adelphi University. Mm -hmm. And you have a law degree from Brooklyn Law School. Yes, I do. So are you a practicing lawyer? Or no, you... I'm a full-time legislator. Okay. And always have been. You got it. You don't have to practice because you got it right already. You know. Oh, so, yes. <laughs> that's good. You're perfect. <laughs> yeah. Well, certainly far from perfect, but I, I just no. felt it's it's very interesting. I um, I became a social worker. It was at the time that uh, it was you know in the '70s, and um, it was a time that was going on in the country where where I wanted to be very active. I was very active in community organizing, and that was my field of study. And later on. Um, I was, as a matter of fact, uh, um, dating Lena at that point. I was accepted to law school. So I remember calling, uh, uh, calling her up and I said, Bubba, uh, I'm going to be a lawyer. I'm going to, lawyer, uh, to law school. So she says, oh, now you'll be a somebody. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but I'll tell you, the MSW is probably doing you very well as the chair of this committee on alcoholism and substance abuse. Well, it is. And now with the new committee also, yeah. uh, uh, Speaker Hasty has uh, made me the chair of the uh, Committee on Aging. Oh, okay. So you're not chair of this no, alcoholism. No, no. I'm now uh, aging for the last four weeks. Oh. Uh, Chair of Aging. Okay, you got to update your website, your uh, assembly website. Okay. Yes, I guess I do. So uh, that's because because your area is, has a lot of seniors. Is that kind of the reason, or like but, Mark said, because you have an MSW, you it can could deal be. With it. Uh, but aging is be usually men. given the committee is usually given to a freshman or no, some. No, never. No, never. It's it's uh, it, it's uh, it's a committee that now it's amazing. Uh, has one of the largest number of uh, members on. Really? There are 28 people on that committee. Okay. It's uh, senior the, members are given are given the really? aging committee. Okay. Right. Yes. So uh, did any of these other committees that I mentioned change? Or no, they didn't. And then, no. Okay. No. So just no. alcoholism changed. Okay. Right. Well, but they, still very active. I think it's you know it's still an issue that that I'm going to continue to be active in. It's, it's important for my district. It's important for all well, communities to, in New York State. I have to tell you a story that I really wanted to mention to you, but I didn't want to take up your time. Um, I had a friend whose father was a doctor and in Mill Basin in Brooklyn, mm -hmm. and his father had a heart, heart condition, heart attack and all that, and had to be uh, convalescing in his home. So every doctor has these uh, prescription drugs that are you, know, you have to keep track of all the use of all these drugs. Mm -hmm. So he brought them home. And he put them in the shed up in the back there. Well, his son found them, and instead of taking just one or two tablets, because they, they had to count them, he took a bottle, figuring, oh, well, we miscounted a whole bottle. Mm -hmm. And he started selling them and taking them himself. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I spent probably a good 15 years trying to get him off drugs, and now he's back at home, and he's doing well. Mm -hmm. And he graduated from college. and. You know, That's great. he's uh, back on the track, on, mm -hmm. the, yeah. on a good treatment, track. So. Treatment is very, it's very important. Very condensed story. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so we, just, we have only one minute left. What are the major issues with aging since this is your, I mean, maybe you're only just started it. Well, but. no, there's, there's two major issues that, that, we've ident that I've identified in the short period of time, and that is since uh, we have uh, uh, an increased number of people who are aging in, in our state, the issues of Alzheimer's and dementia, uh, dementia are enormous. And, and the issue of elder abuse right. um, is, is, is very big. You think of elder abuse as an issue of, of maybe a husband beating up a, spa a spouse, beating up a spouse, but it's financial exploitation where the children are, are abusing well, their saw, parents for money. We saw that with the Astor case. It's, yeah. not, it's even the wealthy. Yes. I mean, we've seen that in so many yeah. stories. And you're 61 years old. Yes. So you're getting, 
You're not a senior yet. Yeah, You're getting well, there. <laughs> you know, the, you know, it's it's interesting that you, um, you know, there are just so many issues that affect every single community. Yes. And it's important that we deal with it. And okay. and those are two big issues that I'm certainly going to concentrate on. Well, I wish you so much success. I really do. I've been a big fan of yours, and I really you think that much. you're a great legislator, one Thank of the you. good guys, mm -hmm. and, you know, maybe you should be, uh, people should emulate your, uh, what you've been doing. So Thank, Thank you, you for much. being on the Jewish View, it. and keep going with your good work, like Mark says, and do it with good health. Thank yes. you. Thank, Thank you. you very much.